Behind me is the Paramount Hotel. It was built in the 20s as an old vaudeville theater. This is where I first got my start in comedy. It was 1983. I was an usher at the Paramount. And they were having the Seattle International Film Comedy. Or fuck that, damn it. I was an usher at the Paramount in 1983. And that year, the, the finals for the film festival, motherfucker, if I say film one more time, and they had the Seattle International Comedy Competition there. And that year, a guy named Ross Schaefer won it. And I actually got to meet him. And I thought, you know, one day, I'm actually going to be on that stage doing that. Well, they don't hold the competition there anymore. But I did enter the Seattle International Film Comedy Competition. God damn it. I always told myself that one day I'd want to enter this competition and get on stage and give it a try. So after 21 years of waiting and 19, fuck me in the butt fuck hole, I want to do it one more time. Okay. This is the Paramount Hotel. It's an old vaudeville theater built in the 20s, and uh, I used to work there. I was an usher in 1983. Did I say hotel? Yeah, you said hotel. I did not say hotel. Yeah, you said hotel. You said hotel like, Fuck me. I was 23 years old at the time, and I thought, you know, one day I'm going to enter that competition. Well, in 2006, I finally did. And this is a story about the longest freaking week of my life. We are in the green room at the Comedy Underground. and uh, It's Friday night, and a good friend of mine, Jeff Lott, is walking in the door. How's it going, buddy? How you doing? If you're doing really well, and you have one more joke that'll just totally blow it up, and you you know you get the five minute light. Hit it as fast as you can. You know, pace through. It. If you're just, I mean, if it's not going well, the best thing to do is you know skip one joke, get right to your closer, get as many points as you can, and get out. But if it's going really well, you want to have that one. You want your closer to, you know, you want people like, yes, it's great, and then hit it with the closer. It's even bigger, and then get the hell out of there. So my bra is my closer. Yeah. Like I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the bra tonight. Okay. And uh, I've got a new one you haven't seen. And, uh, this crowd is so prime for you. My baby's daddy stole my phone. He stole the baby too. You guys are here, man. Take mine. That's awesome. <laughs> it's okay. I think there's a black person in the room and she's laughing. So it's okay, folks. It's all right. Wrong. Is it wrong? It's, wrong. it's a true story, though. It's not true. Now, my wife says I should leave out the fact that she's black when she I say that. I'm sure she probably said you should leave out that whole story. That, you really didn't like that? No. That's oh, bad. I'm sorry. Give me a topic and I'll make a joke just for you. So I want you to be happy tonight. Um, a topic that makes me happy. No, not makes you happy, just anything. I want to you make you happy. You said that makes me happy. Yeah. Take two. Name a topic. <laughs> um, 80s television. 80s television. See, I don't have one for that. Anything else? I said make me happy. said something that would make me happy. Well, get used to guys not happy. pleasing you, honey, because that's going to go through the rest of your life. Here we go with my dog, you see me. looks good. Baby, you're hot. <laughs> what happened? No, my, my baby's dad has stole my phone. Don't say she's done. She's just a gal in the spring spring. Alright, she's a gal in the spring spring. This is my coach. I've told him that like five times. You don't take my advice. Fuck. It doesn't matter what color she is. It's a funny joke. And uh, first off, you just have to weather. figure it out. <laughs> so, how's it, how's it, uh, right now, how are you feeling about next week? You know, 
I still am not ready to uh, tell you the truth. Because um, it's not like this, this five minutes, I have like 90 minutes of material. You know what I'm saying? I have an hour and a half where I can just go up there and tell stories and this and that. But to con concentrate it into five minutes that I can remember and just go out there and do, I, I think I'm going to follow Jeff's advice, which was, you know, fuck trying to be safe, you know, especially in the preliminaries. I'm going to do the bra, because the, the, the bra killed. The bra always kills. So I got to have like two or three minutes of really funny, you know, boom, 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 boom. And then the bra and close on that, and that's it. So I'm going to rework it so that I have some basic stuff. That's my problem. Um, I have too much stuff. And a lot of it is funny. It, the challenge is finding that magical three minutes so that I can then... Uh, it's frustrating. I'm not... Tell you the truth, to answer your question, I'm feeling like shit. I feel like I'm still not ready, so... It's consistency. Like, because it's one night you're at a bar, and then you're at some redneck casino, and then you're at some theater, and it's... it's that's what this contest is consistency. You gotta be funny for all those demographics. Which is why usually this contest, uh, what we call a road comic, meaning someone who works out on the road all the time, usually a road comic wins this contest, and I think that's why. Each year, hundreds of comedians submit to be part of the Seattle International Comedy Competition. 32 are chosen. The tournament takes four weeks to complete. Weeks one and two are preliminary rounds. 16 comics each doing four to six minute sets at six different venues across the state of Washington. The top five comedians from each preliminary round move on to the semifinals. Those 10 then battle for another six days. The top five comedians move on to the finals for yet one more week of shows. It is one of the longest comedy competitions in the world. I'm gonna give you a light at five minutes. It'll it's like this. Light. It's a blinking red light. And then it's gonna blink for a minute, and then we're, you're gonna get a different signal at six minutes. Hmm. On this particular lamp, it's gonna alternate red and yellow. We do have a backup one in case something happens to this. It doesn't alternate, it just goes to blinking yellow. yellow. But red, blinking red is always your five minute light. The next one is always your six minute light, whether it's alternating or blinking. And if you see this light, walk toward it. <laughs> so there's going to be a three, minimum of three judges every night. Uh, you never have the same judge twice. Uh, we ask, we ask them to give you a score from one to ten in each of seven categories. And ten being highest, one being the lowest. And um, at the end of the week, we're going to start dropping out. We start dropping out your lowest score. We only keep the five highest scores and the six scores. And at the end of the week, the comedians with the five highest scores become semifinalists. And you win some money, and you get to go on to the next round. All right, here we are. Welcome to the, what is this, the 26th, 27th, annual Seattle Comedy Competition. $5,000, really? The winner gets $5,000? I didn't get $5,000. <laughs> My advice to any comic who wins that money is you make sure you report that shit to the IRS. <laughs> they do not have a sense of humor about that shit. <laughs> Welcome, people, to the show tonight. We have a really great show, 15 really funny comics who beat out dozens of others, whether it be uh, through uh, auditions or through invite to get to the competition tonight. All right, my thing is, um, in the competition, what a lot of these cats don't realize is I had to change up a lot. Like the way you see me dressed right now, all this shit, no, 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 no. It was all shirt and tie. I never said dick. I always said penis. I never said the F word. I never used the curse word because if you look on this wall, none of these cats are dirty comics. All these cats are clean. Everybody who's ever won this competition was a clean comic. So it comes, it you know, it's on you. On how, do you want to play the game? Sort of like, I guess, you know, a reality show. You want to play the game, then that's what you have to do to win the competition. Because it's never about who's the funniest. The competition is always about 
who they like the most. Coming to the stage, very funny gentleman, quiet as cat. This guy, two to one odds to win the whole competition. Put your hands together for Mike Augustini. We're in the historic Pioneer Square, man. This is awesome. There's a lot of homeless people out there. I'm not gonna make fun of the homeless. God bless them. Okay, I got three jokes. <laughs> I remember a small town, I'm not used to those guys. In a small town, you see those guys, they pull up next to them, you know, and say, hey, Jim, what are you doing? <laughs> Seriously, man, get in the car. Yeah, dad's gonna be pissed. <laughs> I saw a Latino homeless guy today, that was so sad. I, I felt sorry for him, because that's kind of like a double win. It is, because people are going, get a job, you bum. The poor guy goes out and gets a job, then those same racial bastards are going, hey, he's stealing our job! <laughs> Uh, my name is Manol Santanos, and I'm from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, obviously. And I entered a Seattle comedy competition. Um, the reason I wanted to do this is just because I think it would be an amazing chance to get myself out there and to be seen, hopefully. But uh, basically what happened is I've been doing stand-up for about eight years. And what happened was uh, I've been working my ass off for the last eight years doing what I love. And it's pretty well, this is the only thing that means a lot to me. And, I've been also, I'm a lifeguard. I used to be, I, I'm not anymore. I, I quit my job as a lifeguard for this, to do this festival. That's why I feel so happy about the whole situation. But I was working as a lifeguard and I came to a, a point where it was an actual crossroad and they said to me, I said, listen, I got accepted to the Seattle comedy competition. I need two weeks off, maybe three. Can you hook me up? And they're like, and uh, I'm not, my management doesn't really <laughs> like me too much. And uh, they just uh, saw it an opportunity, I think, to get rid of me. But also an op but I think in their heads they didn't think I was going to do it. And they said, no, you can't have the time off. So I just uh, I said, okay, that's fine. I quit. And I quit my job. That was a good paying job. And it was the first time in my life where I realized that what I was making was not even close to what I felt that I was worth in, as a human being. And so I just said, let it, I just let go. I fucking let go. And... Now I'm in this competition and I'm doing my, I'm following my dreams and I feel I've never felt better, you know? Put your hands together for Manolis Zantanos. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. I'm Manolis. I uh, have to say off the top, I'm not a big fan of the winter. I'm more of a summer person, but certain things about the summer I don't like. Hit on the summertime, all you girls always get away with things us guys can't do. You ever know it's a nice summer day, you might see three girls walking in the park. Maybe get tired, they sit down, one girl lies on the other girl's lap. Not a problem. But me, I'm walking through the park with my buddy Bill. I can't lie on Bill's lap. <laughs> Maybe I want to line those up. Maybe I want to rest my head on his bag, just look up at him. <laughs> you know what, man? Your goatee looks so different from down here. <laughs> man, I hope we're friends forever. <laughs> you know what, man? Your bag's way softer, Jeff's. <laughs> That's Jeff. Rory Snowball, Rory! <laughs> Give me any word off the top of your head just how I do the show. Yellow. What? <laughs> <laughs> I heard yoga. Originally, uh, about at the beginning of September, I quit my job and went on a western tour in Canada with uh, Yuck Yuck's Comedy Club. And while I was there, some friends in Seattle mentioned this competition was going to be happening and that I should submit a tape. So I did, and I got lucky, and I, I got into it. So my little journey has extended itself a couple more weeks. I told my, uh, my friends I did yoga. They were like, yeah, we do yoga. We just don't know how we feel doing yoga. I was like, well, has your dad ever breastfed you? <laughs> no? You want to know what that feels like? No? Then don't fucking do yoga. Because that's what it is. You stretch for an hour and then a guy breastfeeds you. At least that's what happened at the place I was at. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Someone see me on TV next year. I actually tried out for Survivor. Yeah.
and my audition went really well. There was 500 people there. But the women were doing something a little unusual. The women were taking off their shirts, walking in there, and yeah, just their bras. And I thought, that's a bunch of crap. So if they can take off their shirt, I can too. And I walked in there and I ripped my shirt off. I just tore it off. I can't do that here, unless you ladies want me to. Okay, guy, I don't want to do the joke anyway. This is me trying to survive, ladies and gentlemen. This is this one coming, did you, sir? This is why I'm no longer teaching, by the way. All right, speaking of the guys now, first of all, guys, this is not as easy as it looks, okay? Yeah, and ladies, ladies, do you have any idea how hard it is to find a 46 A cup? <laughs> Damn near impossible, I'll tell you that. Went to four different stores. So they have a comedian, I'm looking for a bra. She said, hey, Margaret, they're calling themselves comedians now. <laughs> I mean, kids are retarded, though, man. I saw a six-year-old girl with a purse. What the hell's in there, fucking crayons? <laughs> Ah, all right. You guys are talking way too much. All right. yeah. 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 I'm telling you, too, this is a competition, man. <laughs> no, I say, and I love it because now they look at me like I'm a fucking asshole. <laughs> why, why is the TV talking to me? What's the thing? put my job back home to listen to them too. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, you guys ever heard of tie ball, that martial arts training thing again? Draw ball. Draw ball. Here's how draw ball works, man. Some guys ready to kick your ass, rip off your shirt, go, what, you want some of this? <laughs> I'm not gonna touch you, man. If he hurts you, he's going to jail for a hate crime. <laughs> If you kick his ass, well, he just got his ass kicked by a guy with a fuck that joke. God damn it. I was doing so well, too. Oh, man. That was the first, and we'll see how the judges. You know, you never know how the judges score. Are right, they going to score tonight? Oh yeah, yeah. So we'll we're going to know it. We'll know. Night. Yeah. Okay. All right. Top five, All right. unofficial <laughs> finalists for tonight. Coming in fifth, D'Artagnan London. <laughs> fourth, Dustin Hoffman. more important here's it's it's all a combination of things you know what I mean if if uh, uh, if you're a professional baseball player they talk about the five tool player who can do everything so it's not it's not more than one thing it's see you later it's um, it's 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 about being funny yes absolutely it's about being confident and also editing it's about getting to punchlines you can't waste words you really have to be quick to the punchline and, uh, and not waste their time because they make judgments, especially in a competition. They come see in a club, they've got a lot more leeway. In a competition, even the audience feels like they're judging. So within two minutes, they know if they like you or not. Well, can I borrow you a moment? 
Because I'd like to make it clear Your eyes are sweeter when they're looking at me Well, when you're first starting out to you, for him, it's like every night he wants to try something. He wants to try something new. He did really good the night before. So he wants to see if he can do it again. Or he did really crappy. And he's like mad and he wants to find out why. So he's always going down and doing open mics and, and um, talking to himself. <laughs> Walking around. We'll go shopping and I'm, I'm in the grocery store and I'm like, where is he? And he's over in the frozen foods talking to himself. And I'm like, oh my God. People are going to think he's crazy. <laughs> okay, here's the last question for you, Jeff. Do you ever, uh, do you ever uh, talk to yourself? No, oh, constantly. <laughs> all the time. See, I'm not crazy. No, we're not. All comics do it. You get an idea and you start talking your way through the bit. Today, I was, this guy's looking at me next to me on the freeway, right? I go, oh my God, this guy's talking to me. And so I picked up my cell phone. I said, okay, I'll call you back later. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I was on speakerphone. Yeah. Oh, I do it all the time. Right. You know, I've seen... You know, I, you see people, like one of the funniest things to me is guys like listening to rap music on the street and then they're like doing imaginary turntables. I'm like, I would rather be muttering to myself than look like that asshole. I'm like, come on, you know what? I got an uh, argument with this girl recently about abortions. I don't want to offend anybody, but this girl's trying to tell me that she felt that women should only get abortions if they get raped. Well, I don't agree with her. I think women should do what they want with their bodies and pro choice. Alright, no, that's good. Right, that's it. Hey, this girl's telling me I'm rock, that's still a human being inside of him. You're killing a human being, and that's no different than parents. I killed the 12 year old child. I said to her, though, that's the thing, I'm okay with that too. <laughs> I think parents should be allowed to kill their children, man. At any age. That way, if you're having a problem with your kid and you say, Jimmy, clean your fucking room or I'll kill you. Good chance she's gonna clean this fucking room, man. Cause Jimmy don't want to die. Then there's these parents that are smoking in front of their kids, wearing their own homes. I don't agree with that. That's why I mean, if I become a parent, I'm gonna be a responsible parent. I don't care if it's the middle of winter. If I feel like having smoking, I'll look at my kid and say, Jimmy, go outside. <laughs> Sucks to be two, man. Sucks to be two. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you interesting creatures, it's great. You'll notice girls are sitting together tonight, and eventually one of them's gonna have to go to the bathroom. Right? But she doesn't want to go alone, does she, ladies? She wants a partner in crime in the bathroom. A piddle partner. <laughs> what amazes me is they don't even have to talk to each other about it. Like robots, two of them will stand up. <laughs> Do you know how that's possible? Do you know why girls don't have to communicate, fellas? It's because they're fucking beaver toothing under the table. That's what's going on. That's what's happening. Make sure you don't pull the bathroom me too! Oh my god! Send! My wife and I are celebrating something kind of special this year. Our 25th wedding anniversary, isn't that great? I was 12 and she was 10. But we were both 10, so that's... 40. Yeah, 40, okay, thank you very much. Sometimes people uh, will ask me, how do you keep it alive in the bedroom after 25 years? Is that a lot of fantasy? Nothing wrong with that. We all do that. Like sometimes she'll pretend that I'm the guy that picks her furnace. And then sometimes uh, I'll pretend that she's the guy that picks her furnace. Ladies and gentlemen, on table six, the guy that picks her furnace, right here. <laughs> the mic was cutting around. It was, it wasn't the mic. It was doing that under the grill to us thinking that. It's fucking it's bullshit. Like, Which uh, part are you talking about? The mic was cutting out. I said, um, we were, I was 12 and she was 10. But we were from Wilkeson. Yeah, that was the only flat spot. And I, and I, and I think I definitely came out and I think I felt, I, I acted professional. That, that, I don't know, what do you think? But I just think you cut out stuff. I mean, you only have to do four minutes. Oh. You don't have to do three minutes. Alright, y'all, here we go. Your five finalists for the evening. Five unofficial finalists for the evening.
Coming in fifth tonight is Paul Meyerhoff. six. I honestly felt, I know I struggled in the first minute and a half of my set, but then I was able to get my shit together, I rode a nice tide, I had some great laughs, you know, the crowd started to really like me at the end, you know, it was, I, you know, it was incredible. And yet, I placed 11th. Well, you did look good. You looked very confident, you looked, uh, yeah, why am, I, why am I not up there? Uh, well, the laughter was uh, much lower than the guy before you, in the first half. But once you uh, pull out your bra, it's very they laugh. Yeah, do you think it's a mistake to, uh, I mean, man, should I start swearing and get rid of the suit? I'm not in a suit, but should I start looking like a fucking head? What? Jesus Christ. No, I, I don't think it has anything to do with swearing. It's not what you're wearing. It's Mike Augustine. <laughs> uh, and it, what it, it was my Gagustini in the second half too. I was getting bigger laughs. Yeah, well, you know my style. I, I do have, uh, appreciate you and your uh, help. So anyway, man, we'll keep stroking. I'll try to find out where I play. Yeah, we got to get those numbers. Oh. Usually they have a little thing. Yeah, all right, Paul. Thank you, Coach. I'm just kidding. But he did good. He did good. But. A couple of things could have maybe been a little more energetic or you couldn't really hear what he was saying. I don't know if it was the mic or he just wasn't talking about that, but I thought it was a good set. I thought he could have done a couple more jokes in there. But... <laughs> Check out the encore point. This is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So what's the best possible point you can get? So 172, uh, I finished. Okay. Bad. For one judge, what's the best possible? Oh, 70. Oh. Son of a bitch. 70 is the best possible. Son of a bitch. It's all good. It's, the, the encore point is walla, walla. crazy. Here like, we come. Look at that. Two 180s. Two 180s. Rank 4, rank 12. Absolutely. That's, that's the audience component. Other way, if you don't do that, then the audience doesn't get to participate. Well. Say that again, Mike. What happened? There? Uh, two guys got the exact same score from the judges. A total of 180, average of 60 per judge. Good score. 60 out of 70. That's a high score. What's that? That's a high score. High score. One of them got the encore point, ranked number four. Other one didn't get the encore point, ranked number 12. Ooh. That's the guess. Huge. My good friend, uh, Craig Gass, who has done the competition. Matter of fact, when I first started doing the competition, I think my first year, he was one of my mentors from uh, Howard Stern. Yep. Uh, Sex in the City. Yep. They're documenting the uh, competition. Uh, the competition, I think, is the best thing I've ever gone through, man. It's, I never watched and paid attention to so much of my material like I did when I was in this crazy fucking competition, which starts out every week. I, are you are you following everything all week long? 
Yeah, next week. This week. Happy vibes on Monday and Tuesday. Man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, where are you from? <laughs> from DC? Oh, this is great. Isn't this great? We're all going to be in this together. Yeah, it's fun. By the end of the week, you're like, and then, what, what are you going up? You going up eight? All right. I got to beat him. I got to beat. He has to bomb. He has to bomb. He has to bomb. And I have to kill. And by the end of it, there's, there's no more good vibes. Oh, man. So anyway, um, here we are, and uh, Walla Walla is uh, famous for a lot of things, um, including hot poop, records and video, in case you're watching, and uh, fuck, I'm feeling okay, I'm feeling alright, I, like, uh, I feel like I have a friend with me, Tom Taylor, because he's a, he's a pretty good guy for a wacky Australian, um, I heard he's been talking shit about me though, fucker. So I'm going to let him take over the show tonight and see if he can do any better than I can. Okay, here we go. Get ready to make some noise, folks. I'm Tom Taylor, and you're watching Boy American. It's amazing! Yeah! You don't know who I am. I'm Tom Taylor. I'm the host of America's uh, number one infomercial, an Australian one, actually, called Tom Taylor Boy American, because it's amazing. Uh, basically, Mark and I have been working together for a couple of years, and uh, I was pretty excited for him to get in the tournament and all, but I'll tell you this, I think he... Well, I'm not sure. Don't let him see this, all right? But I think you bloody well fucked it up. Yeah, I'm serious. I mean, in Seattle, he did all right. Started off a bit slow and rocky in the beginning. Uh, had a nice closer. Kind of fucked up the ending, though. I was a little bit disappointed, but I thought that's all right. 11th place, that's not bad. We can drop that lower score, and then we go on there. Then he goes to Puyallup, and he fucks it up again. So I told him, I kept bugging him. I said, you got to give me a go. Let me get out there, show my stuff. Because when I, when I, you know, more like Augustine, he does his show, I close the show. Tell me, do you agree with this? I say you get out of it what you put in. One thing, I've, one thing, every year I had done the competition, before I won it, I always came out with a new bit. Yeah. Because it makes you work hard at it. Yeah. But also, it brings out the true person in somebody. You see a person's true personality when they're under duress, and they haven't gotten that encore point. Well, here's what I'm, I got a fucking pee, can you tell? Um, basically, um, the judges, what I overheard someone say is that they're part of a theatrical troupe here, in, in improv troupe here in uh, uh, the, the college, right? So they like sketch comedy and they're gonna fucking eat this up. Tonight, if I rock it, I'm gonna win it. That's my prediction. Tonight, number one, bitches. Number one, baby. Oh, these animals. You been to a comedy show, you see Breaking into chocolate chops and pickle factories. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ladies, I want you to forget you. I got a product just cause. Yeah, you're gonna like it. You're gonna love it, actually. 
How many times has this happened to you? You're lying in bed, ladies. You get a bit granddad. <laughs> but Randy's not around. <laughs> not a problem anymore. Not when you've got the Tom Taylor Dildo Tron 350. flat on its fucking face, so I came in 16. Wow. So I kind of knew that. I thought it would either really, you know, I didn't even get the encore point. That's what's shitty. And I agree with Harold. I didn't deserve it. And I could have stood up there and milked it, and that would have made a little bit of difference. It probably would have made me, you know, 12. <laughs> But I still just, they didn't like me. I guess what's bumming me out about this thing is that I, you know, I sacrificed everything. I sold my car. I had a freaking Corvette. And sold that. Sold my wife's old Mercury just to finance this thing. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's all, it's not for nothing, I guess. I'm still uh, going to keep my head up as much as I can. But, man, 16th is shitty. I'm a fucking bum, man what I am. I'm fucking really, really bummed. So, but I don't quit. I'm going to keep stroking. It's a corporate show tomorrow in Seattle. It's going to be a very older crowd, rich old people. Um, I got some stuff that, that they can like and identify with because those are my peeps, you know. They're losing their hair. They're married, you know. I go up to see her, say I got some news for you. She smiles and she kisses me. You know what, I've always heard stories about how crazy people get and they're just tired all the time. And I don't know, I, look at me. I don't know if you can see. You see that? It looks like I've been smoking pot. My eyes are fucking bloodshot. I haven't smoked pot in 25 years. Maybe I'm having a flashback. I'm tired. I didn't sleep very well. Obviously, uh, I'm really bummed out about last night because I got 12th. I mean, excuse me, I, I got 16th. I got last place, which is incredible. So what I'm hoping for tonight, obviously, is to, uh, this is this is the night where I should shine. These, these are older people. These are educated people. You know, they're my peeps. They're the people that are going to like me. This is my pick to win the whole competition. So put your hands together for Natalie Gray. You know, keep it clean, no bad words. I'm like, okay, I won't say poor. <laughs> I feel, uh, I like it. I like it, man. I dig it. They, these people, I, it doesn't matter where we go to perform, they're, they're cool, man. They're hip. I mean, this crowd tonight is supposed to be rich and up class, rich, and everybody thinks, has this perception of like they might be snobby or they're like too, uh, like, uh, 
highbrow, you know. And I, can't, I remember Jerry Seinfeld said that on his uh, his movies, like funny is funny. I have uh, been noticing lately. Every time I am hanging out with girls, I always notice one girl will say to another girl at some point, she'll be like, "Oh my God, Sally, your tits are so big." But these things, oh, they're just a headache. You just take them. I'm thinking, think, there's a conversation you're never going to hear two guys have, eh? Two guys in the gym shower. <sighs> Jesus Christ, Frank, that cock's fucking huge. <laughs> this meaty thing? Jesus Christ, it's a headache. You just take it. I just want to stop and say thank you because you guys are awesome. You know, the Washington Athletic Club, you guys are well known for your donations to the community. So give yourselves a round of applause, please. Thank you. Now, that being said, I'd like to talk to you about a charitable organization that I've created <laughs> called Buy a Comedian a Mercedes. Now, here's how it works. Comedian gets off stage. He did a good job. You buy him a Mercedes. Really. It doesn't even have to be a new one like that one that crashed in the lobby. It doesn't have to be like that one. No, it could be a used one. We'll take used. Yeah, I'm sure you got one just laying around the garage someplace. And it doesn't have to run. We'll take them running or not. In fact, for comedians, we might even take your car while it's running. So. How did I get into this festival? I heard about it. I was recommended that I check into it by a couple friends who thought I would do well in this kind of thing. And uh, so I sent a tape or a DVD or whatnot uh, months ago. And then Ron Reed got back to me and was like, are you sure you want to do this? It's it's a long time, you gotta be out here. And I was like, I think so. And he was like, okay, if you say so. And uh, he didn't say, he was much nicer than that voice, and it was email. But uh, that's basically it. And then I was like, yeah, I guess I'll do it. You know, sometimes when people quit smoking, they don't. Like, they're like, hey, can I get one from you? Trying to quit. I do that all the time now. Can I get one of your donuts? I'm on a diet. Mind if I sleep with your wife? I'm getting a divorce. I'm Jeff Dye, stand-up comic. Is this your first year in the competition? This is my first year in the competition. I'm the youngest competitor in the competition at age 23. Uh, no, my friends are always saying that. I've been trying to work out, but that shit's heavy. And, uh... <laughs> all my guy friends are like, Jeff, you always joke about being skinny. You always talk about wanting to do steroids. Why don't you just do steroids? Well, that's dumb, because steroids are illegal. And if I'm going to do an illegal drug at the gym, I've already made my decision. Ecstasy. Imagine that workout, just rubbing the weights on your body, like, mm. Mm. This is an effect of the passionate. One. Two. Oh, that freaked everyone out, too. They'd be like, holy crap. I've been doing stand-up for a year and like three months. I did public speaking for like five years before this. Public speaking. For Seven Habits of Highly Successful Teens. Which is pretty lame, but after that I realized, hey, I can, I can say whatever I want if I do comedy, and that'd be cool. Do you guys, are you guys excited for what's happening on January 2nd of next year? Yeah, do you know? DVD release of Snakes on a Plane? <laughs> Absolutely. Genius movie. Genius guy came up with it. Here's the pitch of the movie. Here's what happened. He's like, hey, people are afraid of flying. People are afraid of snakes. They gave him a lot of money. <laughs> so I have some ideas for movies now. My first one is uh, Spiders on a Bear. <laughs> on a plane in the dark falling while talking to girls. <laughs> and my wife said the same thing. She says, when I'm up on stage and I'm enjoying myself and I'm having fun, it's so much different than when I'm up there and you can tell. And I'm not very good at hiding my emotions. Like when I get upset or pissed at somebody, you know, it's pretty obvious. And kids are expensive, too. They are. Kids will drive you. I read a study that there's cost $258,000 to raise a child from birth to 18. Yeah, I read that study. I told my kids, you guys are so lucky I don't run my family like I'd run a corporation. <laughs> yeah, come on, kids. Sit down in the living room here. Yeah, this is Bob from accounting. And uh, yeah, I got some bad news. We're going to have to let you guys go. <laughs> Hey, go dirty. Seriously, dude. All right, man. I just went totally squeaky clean with funny stuff, and they just stared at me like ducks in a row. I think they want to. That's what I've heard about this place: is that 
everybody goes clean, everybody sucks, and then all of a sudden somebody will say fuck, and then the room goes dirty the rest of the night. So I'm just trying to help you. Do one little tiny thing and see how they dig it. And if they dig it, jump all over it. I like, the, my favorite part about my gym is the chicks that dress really slutty, and then they're like confused why everyone's staring at them at the gym. I don't know if you guys have this, these girls. <laughs> they're like, why is everyone staring at me? Yeah, when they get ready, they put on like full makeup. Sports bra, which is underwear, it goes under your outerwear. That's how that works, ladies. Spandex shorts that say juicy on the ass. <laughs> and they're like so confused, like, why is everyone staring? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you creep. <laughs> I'm looking because you're wearing underwear, that's why. Yeah, but you know what's gonna happen? I, I, I tell you what's gonna happen, the same thing I just told him, is that someone's gonna say fuck and then they're just gonna start tearing it up, you know? They, those people don't want clean. You know, they tell us they want clean, but you watch what happens, mark my words. When people go nuts towards the end here, they're gonna, they're gonna start going dirty, and uh... Yeah, I mean, what can I do, you know? That's good, you really, I don't know. I think you I was looking at the judges the whole time. Fuck. You girls need to understand something. We, we're trying to do a good job with you. Because we think the better that we do, the more you want to fuck us. So when we say don't move, we really mean don't fucking move. <laughs> but some of you girls have this little thing you do, and it could be in the moment, she's on the bottom, you're on the top, you're like, hey, don't move, don't fucking move. And she's like, okay, but in the back of your mind, you think, oh, I'm sure he doesn't mean this. You do this little thing? <laughs> I fucking mean that too, all right? <laughs> All right, you guys are fucking awesome. I gotta go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Coming in fifth place tonight, put your hands together for Rory Skolbeck. Once again, um, man, <laughs> I went from being extremely clean yesterday, or excuse me, very clean yesterday, and to being very dirty, and so um, it's hard to say. Good job, guys. Now, did you notice that Rory did not get an applause break? Applaud point. He didn't get it. And yet, so, it'd be interesting to find out exactly where I was compared to him. All right. Anyway, go clean, go dirty. I don't know. I have no idea. King word. I uh, feel pretty good. Second place tonight. Um, Rory freaked me out. We French kissed before the show. <laughs> and it kind of got to me. Like, I, I'm, I'm pretty hot on him or whatever. Like, I think he liked my belt buckle. There's more where that came from, Paul. There's more where it came from. So he's trying to psych me out, but it didn't work, so here I am, and uh, yeah, feel pretty good about second place. Since I don't understand this, I'm, I'm 15th. Yes. Out of the 16 comedians, right. your final average score for the night right. was the 15th highest out of the 16. 
15th highest. Yeah. So that means I, uh, okay. Well, you could say it's second to last, Mike, but I wouldn't because ah, I like you. Oh my God, Fifth, that's funny, 15th dude. 15th highest. <laughs> All right, thank you. So anyway, check this out. If I'd have got the Encore point, what difference would that have made? Well, the Encore point right here on the sheet um, adds one entire point to your score. So if you look at the person who got the uh, Encore point, Jeff Dye, he had a, a average or a average score of 9.64. Right. He had the Encore point, so his score is 10.64 because the, he took first. They up it to 11 and then adjust every one up by the same amount it took to push him up. If you would have gotten the Encore point, then one more point would have added. So your adjusted score would have been 7.82. You would have been ahead of Yoram. You would have been ahead of uh, Victoria and just behind Haji in 11th place, it looks like. So I still would not have placed in the top five, then. You would not have placed in the top five with the Encore point. All right. You know what we'd love to do sometime, Peter, is um, that might be good enough because... Okay. <laughs> I don't know about you, but did you get all that? This confuses the hell out of me. I don't get it. I'm really, I mean, I'm going to, you know, obviously keep stroking, but right now, folks, uh, this becomes a matter of an adjusted goal where I went from wanting to win the Seattle International Competition to basically getting in the top five in the prelims once. So uh, that's where that's at. Tomorrow in Longview, some loggers, some spotted owl haters, and I'm going to do something crazy there. I don't know. I'm going to do something. I'm not doing any fucking jokes, that's for sure. I'm going to whip my dick out. That's what I'm going to do. Jesus Christ. Done. Here we go. Time to rock. See if I can pull myself out of the cellar. Because my new goal is to get into the top five at least once. Here we go. Wish me luck. Peace out. Yes. I'll tell you the secret to long marriage two words New Horizons. You guys know what that is? New Horizons will help your marriage. If you don't know what that is, it's an adult sex club for swingers in Linwood, Washington. <laughs> okay, I've never gone there, but I want to go. But my wife, yeah, she won't go. She's afraid if we go up there, somebody might recognize us. I said, honey, if we go up there and you run into someone we know, fuck them. The Toyota fucking Sequoia. Hey, look, there's a real Sequoia now. Shit, how'd we miss it? I think it's the last one. Quick, run it over in your fake Sequoia. Some dickhead in Japan needs decorative lawn bark. And only this 8,000-year-old fucking tree will do. You realize that's where all the trees are going, right? Japan. You're selling your children's inheritance to Japan, right? Of course they're buying the trees. It takes them 150 years to grow a fucking bonsai. It's like a foot tall. Of course they're coming to the Northwest. Jesus Christ, I got blackberry bushes in my front yard that are two weeks old that'll eat that 150-year-old bonsai tree for breakfast and then shit me out of pie by mid-morning. Arlo Stone from the drama uh, is gonna blow up. And Arlo Stone is like me. We're both headliners. I'm about this big. Arlo is this big, okay? I am nothing compared to that guy. That guy's a fucking genius. But in these little five-minute things, you can't bring that out. I know there's a fucking lot, lot of loggers here tonight, hopefully. There you go. And I'll say this. I'll say this. It's an admirable craft, all right? There comes a time and a place in history when it's time to move forward. And I'll say this. The old growth, you're done. That's it. I will fight to the fucking death for the old growth. So will everybody I know. You can play around in your warehouse a lot with your little fucking matchsticks and fucking do whatever. But the old growth is out, dude. We will burn whatever. We will fucking make it your insurance so fucking high you'll never fucking afford it. Anyone who ties himself to an operation that operates on old growth forest, you're just fucking your grandchildren right in the ass. So I hope you're fucking happy about that. I hope you feel good when you fucking hit the sack. Fuck you! Boo, fuck you! I love it, Kelso! That's right! Woo! How am I doing on time? <laughs> By the way, don't fuck me on the encore point. This town is a fucking sea of redneck loggers. 
the whole thing is vlogging industry. That's it, and they're all fucking assholes. So they got fucking one for the good guys tonight. That's for the Dems, fucking knobby need fucks. We all know, by the way, that uh, speaking of Veterans Day, how about a salute to the veterans, huh? Yeah. And since you're in Veterans Day, how about a little candor? Because after all, the war really is about oil, right? We all know that. Let's be honest here on Veterans Day. At least we owe them that much, right? Oh, get out of here! Woo! Don't talk about fucking the war. This is a comedy show, dude. I'm trying to do jokes. You can't fucking take the heat. You get out of here. I see you walking. That don't impress me. I fucking walked the handicap before, dude. You walk. All right, that was one for the comics. You walk. I'll get off my when I'm finished with my time. I want to talk about the war. I want to talk about your fucking war for a second. Y'all voted for for a second, right? Oh, we can't leave now. We need an exit strategy. Exit strategy? What the fuck are you talking about? It's like a drive-by shooting. You need an exit strategy. I know. I'm looking for one. All right, here's a big close. <laughs> Thank you, lady. That was my best line of the night. Here, I'll wrap it up just for you right now, honey. show you my shirt, right? Fucking those, that's been 10 years in the brewing, that fucking tirade against those fucking, and then what happened? So I go out, I like, I, all I wanted to say was, good to be here, I'm from Oregon, and then do the whole thing about the Sequoia and see where it went, and it did really well, but what happens? The dude fucking yells out like a punk, right? The same fucking way, and I'm like, that's it, dude, this is where we are, and that, as soon as he said that, I set the wheels in motion. Spotted Owl, dude. Beautiful. Spotted Owl will fucking live long past any of these fucking hate. Did you see that shirt? Yeah. I didn't get a chance to tell him. This is how you win, dude. You take the fucking enemy's fucking bullshit. Not one <laughs> shirt. Because here's my new shirt. I hope you enjoy it. It says, Preserve the Spotted Owl. Enjoy the rest of the show. So long to you. All right, dude. So when I got it, this is all it said. It said preserve the spotted owl. Stuff it. All right. It's a cute little fucking logger shirt. I get it. But I then turned it around and said stuff it in a logger's ass, so he can finally see one. See, it's nice with the head of the uh, with the thing and finally and the so uh, fucking one for the owl, dude. It's well written. The owl fucking flew tonight. Even better delivery. Uh, actually, cheese, tomato sauce, and spotted owl. Uh -huh. That's very exciting. <laughs> he doesn't agree with, but that's why I'm in here eating it's, it. Actually, it's, it's, actually, it's from the concession. It's a yeah, specialty. It was know. tonight's special. It was cheaper, and I figured, what the fuck. It was a I didn't know second. Arlo was going to hate me because I ate it. I didn't kill the owl, Arlo. Arlo's a dick. Connect the dots between your SUV and your fucking war, man. That's all I ask in Kelso. It's not much. Oh my god. Hey, is it just me or did uh, Arlo Stone look a lot like a spotted fucking owl? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, let's mix it up there. Let's play a game called Make Some Noise. Let's play a game. Make some noise if you're a smoker. That wasn't bad. Make some noise if you're not a smoker. <laughs> See, I'm a smoker. We lost against. I tell you what, pretty soon smokers will be treated like registered sex offenders. It's true, if you're a smoker and you move to a new neighborhood, you get to knock on people's doors. Yeah, I'm just moving in across the way. I need to let you know I'm a registered smoker. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, I'm just a level two. Just... 
technology is weird. I don't understand why we name things the way we do, like a lie detector. It's equally a truth detector. Why don't we call it that? Why are we so negative? Imagine, yeah, exactly. Imagine if everything was named so pessimistically, like a scale. It's not called a fat finder. <laughs> Let's see how fat you are today, fat so get on the fat finder, you fatty. Still pretty fat there, fats. All right. An IQ test is not called a retard alert, right? <laughs> Um, thank you. I used to be a teacher. Any teachers out there? Oh my god. I taught history for 13 years. 13 years of teaching history and I quit because I got bored. It was history. Every year was the same fucking thing. Just when you think the South's gonna pull it off. Son of a bitch! I got so bored I started playing what if history with the kids. Yeah, like what if Hitler would have been openly gay instead of the closet queen that he was. That way instead of high Hitler, it would have been high Hitler. <laughs> Someone smoking like two or three packs a day? Is that fucker alone? Legend. You buy by the pack or the cart? But it depends on what? On whether you're gonna quit or not? If you walk into a fucking gas station, I just want one pack, I'm pretty sure this is dead. They walk over to the, it's like walk, buying one roll of toilet paper, going, this, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna quit shit. I don't, no, I don't need any heavy duty roll there, just, just one more roll. After tomorrow, I'm done pooing. You buy a cart and you're making a statement that the world can see. I'm not fucking quitting today. My friends are like, how can you be so sure just because she gives you roadhead? Tons of girls give roadhead. I was like, guys, she was driving the fucking car at the time. And that's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. She was from Kelso! <laughs> trying to think how to deal with this woman. And I've never met a retarded prostitute. That's inappropriate! <laughs> You're someone's grandmother. <laughs> I'm picturing what that little fucker's like. I was in London, man. Everybody smokes in London. They don't have a smoking ban. They don't understand it. This one lady actually walked up to me. She goes, oh, you an American? I said, yes, I am. She goes, is it true, or heard on the telly, that you Americans can no longer torture fag in public? <laughs> I said, I think in Texas you can still do that, ma'am. I'm not sure. I don't understand, though, like people, my last thing I want to talk about is like people that um, don't sin, like Christians, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do drugs. You know what? Jesus Christ died for your sins. If you don't sin, then he died for nothing. <laughs> That's why I say, man, I do it for Jesus. I love you, man. I gotta go. Thank you very much, for coming out. Well, she told me a sad story Put my suitcase in my hand Funny how sometimes things just go Those plans I actually felt comfortable like the best set ever this week after eating uh, four shit sandwiches in a row and you know what? For one shit sandwich is really delicious but after the fourth one you kind of, you know you want something else So I bet you, here's my prediction, okay? Because the way things are going, I'm saying, I bet you I come in sixth. I want to come in second or third, but I'm willing to bet. Go off the stage, Harold's coming up, and uh, let's see what's going to happen. Maybe I'll get on stage for the first fucking time of this whole thing, huh? Maybe a little too late. If not, good set, man. Go that way. Alright guys, this is it. These are your five finalists 
unofficially for the competition. Coming in fifth tonight, Mr. Rory Skolbeck. In fourth, Natalie Gray. Coming to the third guy, Paul Meyerhall. Coming to third. Fifth, Mike. No, wait, wait. Coming in second, Mike Kaplan. And the number one comic for second, Mike Pro, Jeff Dodd. Jeff Dodd, Oh, at last we meet. Well, I've chased you for eternity. Let's talk a while and I don't care who sees They say that loving you is something to be cursed People point and stare, they think the worst but we don't care So oh, let's leave them all behind Where I can just be yours and you'll be mine and call who only shine for you when darkness falls who would gaze at us under the bluest skies jealous of our happy lives to where both forced our separate ways and me today and banish you tonight I, I heard this saying and my friend Delight told me once uh is, uh, don't get, so what does she say to me? Don't get trapped in your little bag of rocks. It's like a bag of fucking bullshit and they're all little pebbles. And you can choose to be in that fucking bag or you can choose to be out of it. You know, so it's like, it's, you choose on what you want, what your hang up to be. And I choose not to have any. You know? That's what I'm saying. Like, who gives a fuck what anybody thinks? Stress bucket here when he's not thinking about doing something on stage, he's thinking about what he should have done and how he should have done it. And, oh, it's like constantly. How's it affecting you? You're stressing me out. Why? Because I feel like I'm living here alone. And there's just this guy sitting over there, <laughs> stressing out. You know, I your eggs overcooked. You know why they overcooked? Because you're spaced out. I set my watch. You told me two minutes to boil the eggs, and the, when I when I woke up. I wasn't asleep, but I was in my, whatever the world is. Uh, obsessing. Obsessing. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, I said, six minutes, holy shit. And it was like. You didn't hear your clock going off? <clears throat> no, it's just timing. Oh. You want me to tell you something else? Sure. On the camera? You want me to tell you on camera? I'd love it. Um, you know, you put way too much pressure on yourself coming into this. And, and that worked against you from the beginning. You were so stressed. You were so worried. And you were so afraid you you weren't you know what I mean you put way too much way too much pressure on yourself. How long have you been doing comedy? Two years? A year and a half? Um it'll be two years in December. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my point. Yeah. Right there. Is that considering how long you've been doing this, you're doing pretty good. Yeah. Watch how happy Mike is at the beginning. And watch what happens if Mike doesn't finish in the top five. How much? This is the final night of the competition. Uh, currently, I am in, I believe, 13th place. Um, if I am able to uh, do a really good job, I might be able to move up one or something. But over than that, it's, uh, it's all said and done. So I'm going to have fun. I want to try to take first. I was going to do something really wild and crazy. <laughs> And I think it would have worked, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any maple leaves to make fun of the Canadians. So that's probably good. I probably shouldn't have gone up there halfway naked anyway. But um, 
typical drama bullshit. There's uh, games being played, head games, and all that crap. And personally, I think Dan is going to do nothing. I think he's just saying all this stuff to cause these other guys to freak out and have backup jokes or whatever. You know, it's just the, the drama and the bullshit that had comes into these things. So uh, I did my thing. I set up the comics four hours. Actually, last night I started last night when I started spreading the word around Seattle that I was going to do everybody's material and that I was going to do 20 minutes. Uh, I think there's a lot of immature people in this competition. One didn't show up tonight, who I like and respect and love. But I think what he did was very unprofessional and immature. Uh, there's a lot of head games going on in this. And I think, uh, I think people are going about it wrong. For him to go up and try to wreck my set, I do a lot of improv, so it, it wouldn't matter to me anyways. And plus, since I'm already through, it doesn't matter. But I think it's pretty unclassy and pretty unprofessional. And immediately, people started to freak out. Now, a professional comedian won't freak out. Dat fan would freak out. Dat fan disciples freak out. We have a lot of Dat fans in this competition, and they freaked out. And if you're a headliner, and a lot of the comedians, the ones that have no problem with that, they don't give a shit. They just, you know, they're professionals. They're not pretenders. They're like, cool, dude. I understand what you got to do. You know, go ahead. I understand. I got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 minutes. And thus far, they've certainly thrown that down. But I was bribed and threatened. Even the management was freaking out. They came back and made some kind of, uh, a, you know, just kind of oblivious comment. Like, I just heard that some comedians were going to do extra time and maybe do other people's, commu you know, humor. I was arguing philosophy with a couple of the people. But if you don't have the time, you don't have the time. So for, as for what Dan's doing, it doesn't really, ultimately doesn't affect me that much, especially because of the, the way the numbers are working out. I can see, I understand why other people are upset because they're, ta you know, it's a thing to be taken seriously. And in the art form of comedy, I think screwing people up or aiming to affect people in a certain way uh, is an odd choice. And, I, and I'm a headliner, dude. This means nothing to me. And I hate to say that uh, to demean the competition, but it's really... Uh, like in three weeks, you know, I'll get a phone call from the guy that books this, and he'll just say, come back here and do this. And these people travel a long way. They want to compete. It means more to them. I just wanted to show them where they stood in their own careers. So they had two hours. They had two hours to think about what they were going to do. And instead of actually thinking about it, they cried and they carried on. They threatened me. And it's like, man, that's where you are with comedy then. This is my pick to win the whole competition. Put your hands together for Dan Rock. Aaron Gomez, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody feeling? You all right, Aaron? All right. Such a pleasure to be at the Fairhaven again. How many people have actually seen me up here in one of the six dozen times I've actually been here? Yeah, you've seen me? Yeah, all right. Well, uh, this is the last night of the competition. It's been a real interesting week. Is a really talented bunch of people you're about to see here this evening. Incredibly talented. I would say that who all saw the show last week? Some unfunny motherfuckers compared to this group you're gonna see here tonight. Anybody can beatbox for one minute. That's not fucking funny. What's funny is jokes. And what we have in this week is a lot of people with jokes. But how many people here remember last comic standing? That little television show they did there not too long ago. Also a comedy competition, not unlike this one. And somehow a man with 10 minutes of material was the funniest man in America. You guys remember that? Remember that? Fucking unreal. So tonight I told all the comedians that I was going to come up here and do all their jokes. Forcing them to do a different five minutes in front of them. They were just freaking the fuck out. We had one person cry. We had some threats. I got bribed. I told them I was going to come up here and do like 20 minutes of whatever I wanted to do. I was going to do all their jokes. These people freaked out. I did not do it because I thought that somehow I was going to make myself better or win this competition. I really could care less at that point. What I wanted to do is to show them inside of themselves what it takes to win a competition. If you freaked out, that should tell you where you stand. These people don't have anything to worry about. I'm not going to do their jokes. These people can stand alone on their humor. And right now, if you listen, you'll hear a lot of people going, <sighs> There's no reason to cry, people. You're going to win. The people I vote for to get into this competition are, are brilliant. I really do. 
And I think that if Seattle's going to elect somebody to win this whole fucking thing, I think it's going to come out of our week. I really do. I want you to watch Mike Kaplan. He's going to come up here. He's going to be brilliant for you. He came a long way to be funny. I want you to watch Rory Scovel. Rory Scovel's a very funny man. He also came a long way. I want you to watch Jeff Dye. He's going to come up behind me. It's very funny. It's very pretty. Yeah, Harold Gomez. Vote for him. Because after his 2003 win, nothing happened. So he's hoping that if he wins this time, something will happen. Those comedians are funny. And I want you to give them your respect. How many people are voting tonight? How many of my judges? Where are they at? There's four of you. There are 600 people in this room. Four people decide the fate. Four people are actually the conscience of 600 people. Is that fair? No. How many people want to vote tonight? Exactly. Let's do it a different way. Fucking encore point. Some people are funny, some people aren't funny. You know, encore point means shit. If you want to win this, it should be up to you people. There's all different kinds of people. Black, white, short, fat, small, gay, straight. You should all be voting on this, not just four people. Let these people know when you come up here how much you love them, because they're going to come up here and they're going to impress you immensely. And I want you to watch them all. Sadly, we lost two competitors. We don't have Arlo Stone with us anymore. Funny fucking guy. Carlos Cockton, very fucking funny guy. Lost him as well. I want you to watch, watch Victoria Patterson. She traveled all the way down here from Canada. She's very funny as well. And I want you to give them your love because they certainly deserve it. I will come back up here and keep entertaining you guys long after these people have gone back to their homes and long after this competition is over. So this means fuck all to me. This is talent you're about to see here. There's no Dat fans in this fucking group. No fucking Dat fans. This is all Dave Mordahl's right here, man. This is Alonzo Bowden time. So I want you guys to pay attention, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Dan Rock! Coming to the stage, that very, very funny young man. Oh, this guy is my pick, because he has the coolest name in the whole competition. Put your hand together. You know who it is? Who is it? Uh, my name is D'Artagnan London. First year in the competition? Yeah, first time. How long have you been doing comedy? Um, I've been doing stand-up for about two years. Um, uh, and before that, I did sketch comedy and improv for several years in college and uh, out after college. Anyone here from Blaine? No? no? Excellent. Oh, stuck fish. There we go. Griffin Blaine. Yeah? And that's why I'm not there anymore. <laughs> it, was, it was a weird place. There we go. Sir, how old's your daughter? Ten. Ten? Whoa. You getting nervous, buddy? Seven more years? <laughs> hey? Until a guy... <laughs> right? You don't want that shit to happen, eh? If I ever have a daughter, my game plan is to feed her nothing but Happy Meals from day one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just pork her right up, hey, hey? <laughs> Who wants another cheeseburger, hey? <laughs> Who's daddy's little sea donkey? Aren't you, aren't you? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's her breathing, hey? <laughs> Growing up in Blaine was a weird thing. Um, we, uh, our mascot in Blaine was the Borderite, which uh, I don't know what the fuck that is. It seems like a... Come on, microphone, yes. Stay with me, microphone. All right. I don't know what a Borderite is. It seems like a disease you would give to your dog. And then have to explain why you gave the dog the disease. <laughs> but it's cool. I like Bellingham a lot better. It was the place we used to come, like, to see movies and stuff. You know, it's like, you guys don't spell culture with a K. <laughs> Actually, in Blaine, they spell it with three, but that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, grew up there, scars to prove it, in my mind. 
I've got three kids at home, um, teenagers. I don't call them teenagers. I like to call them third world countries. Yeah, because they're always borrowing money, but they're never going to pay me back. <laughs> and my oldest son's cool. He also has modern terms that kids use, like bling bling. I didn't know what that was. When I was in high school, bling bling was that one Asian dude. <laughs> bling bling McAllister. He was... You ever wonder what's going on in area, areas 1 through 50? <laughs> Nobody seems to be talking about these. I think that's the real conspiracy. People are like, Area 51, aliens. What about the other 50 areas? I think I figured it out though. I think it's the 50 states, which makes Puerto Rico Area 51, which is where the aliens come from. <laughs> yes. Clap for geographical inaccuracy, because that's part of our country, they're not aliens at all. When I would meet people in Blaine, uh, they'd always freak out over my name. You know, they'd be like, how'd you get that name? As though I have like a story that makes that make sense. You know, as though I'm just gonna like pull out a leather tome. <sighs> the Legend of D'Artagnan. <laughs> Chapter one. Four score and seven years ago, the council of gathered. I said wizards. <laughs> and ordained that the next child born with the powers of magic would be named Dart <laughs> I said D'Artagnan. <laughs> A bitch. world. You don't keep it a secret. It's like banging a unicorn. Are you going to keep that on the DL? No. 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 Hey guys, I fucked a unicorn. So who gives a shit if I'm a bad bowler? <laughs> Fucking dick faces. insult you again. <laughs> you guys, I didn't come here just to tell jokes. I came here to change your mood. With a little friend of mine I like to call the funk. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. See, you can laugh or not laugh, but right now, you can't help but groove. <laughs> Put you in a little bit of a joke listening mood, huh? Yeah. I saw a bumper sticker on the back of one of those hippie vans the other day. It said, don't laugh, lady. Your daughter could be in the back. <laughs> Which I thought was awesome. So I got one and I put it on the back of my car. Which is a hearse. <laughs> I saw a commercial uh, today on television that's pretty funny. It's a anti-smoking commercial. Clap if you guys have seen this. It's, a, it's an anti-smoking commercial, but they use two creepy little big-eyed babies. Have you guys seen this? Okay. For those of you who haven't seen it, I'm gonna give you a sneak preview. You ready? Creepy clay baby forest. Okay? Two creepy clay babies. Alright? 
and they're on a creepy clay baby date, okay? They're going to have a creepy clay baby makeout session. There's creepy clay baby music all beep, 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 beep. And they're going out to look smooth, right? Creepy clay baby number one turns to kiss creepy clay baby number two. Before he can, creepy clay baby number two has a creepy clay baby dead rat in her hands, and she's eating the creepy clay baby stomach. <laughs> Creepy Clay Baby music takes a harsh turn, all dreary, like oh, 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 goes to Creepy Clay Baby sign. Boom! Kissing a smoker is just as gross. I doubt it. <laughs> I don't even smoke, it made me want a cigarette. I was like, holy shit! She was eating a rat. I'm a trendsetter. I was into the Olsen twins. Sex with Jeff Dye. How many people want to have sex with Mike Augustini? Well, that's still pretty good, man. Okay. Anyway, guys, the time's almost up. There's so many jokes to this thing. But I just want to say thank you to Ron Reed. Thank you for everybody. And I know I look like an idiot here, but I don't really care. I've had a great time in this tournament. You guys are awesome. Bellingham, have a great time. Thank you very much. Well, I just did my set, and I'm basically, um, I don't know if it's because I'm tired or exhausted or whatever, but um, I started off pretty good, but it's, it's, I just didn't uh, finish strong. Um, I didn't get the encore point again, and so, uh, I don't know, man. I'm so tired, I don't even care, to tell you the truth. I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed. I wanted to do well. I took some chances tonight. I was improving with Jeff's uh, ad lib with the sing there. And... Coming in for hey guys, let's show a little enthusiasm. Let's yeah. They work hard, man. It's been a long fucking week. These cats come from a long ways and traveled a long time 
Come on, give it up for number four, Mr. Paul Meyer Hall. Coming in third, Natalie Gray. Coming in second, Rory Scobell. Favorite, I like to call him LL Jeff Dye. I don't know. It'll probably be that one night where I end up placing because you know. <laughs> but you know what they're looking for? They're looking for smoothness and you know song and dance. And I'm everybody else is tired too. But maybe it's because I put so much. I don't know what the fuck. All I know is I didn't. Uh, it's over. It's not the way I wanted to go out, though. Not at all. Well, good morning. It's time to wake up. 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 I don't know about you, but after one week I was tired. How do you feel? Like right now you're probably feeling good, but coming into tonight, were you, were you worn out? Were you tired? Or Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Everything's tired. I'm emotionally tired. I'm physically tired. My bank account is definitely tired. <laughs> Three weeks, uh, like, spending money on hotels and, no, you know what I mean? Like, that, that my savings is gone. Everything is gone, but uh, it's really worth it. It's really worth it. Oh, man. Absolutely. Well, you know what? We uh, I know people are going to just fall in love with you and you're going to have a great career, so uh, congratulations once more. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's a good man. Invited me over for Thanksgiving dinner. How well, about that? Always, How about what that? Would Thanksgiving be without a Canadian? That's right. That's <laughs> you know, I apologize because I know it's been hard. I had no idea. How stressful it was going to be? I mean, it'd be a lot less stressful. It's like when you're getting your ass kicked, it hurts. But when you're kicking someone's ass, it doesn't hurt so bad. I know. If you, if you were doing better, it wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> no Plus, shit. the traveling's been really, really hard, I think, too. Just not getting enough sleep and then having to get up and go. And well, you're a trooper. I appreciate hanging in there with me. So next week you'll go back to work? Um, no, next week I'm doing a uh, Mormon <laughs> gig in Utah. <laughs> but we all have this need to go up there and challenge ourselves and to write something and to be original and to try to deliver it and and that and if you suck, you you stay up at night going, damn, why did I suck? And then you want to go back and do it again. Damn it, why is it doing that? Yes. Jesus Christ. Anyway. We could be getting interference from somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Okay, so anyway. Weird. It's coming. So we're going to let this helicopter go by. Would I do it again? In a heartbeat. Because now I know that there's certain things you do and certain things you don't do. And the main thing is if I could get back in there and uh, relax and just not sweat it, I think I'd do much better. I don't want to fucking do it again. Really, I don't. I just said that for the camera. One, two, one, two, three. Well, it's a long, long road. It's a long, long road. It's a long, long road on high. If you want to save your soul, you gotta walk that free road. It's a long, long road on high. Well, I've done everything I could. Yes, I learned my bad from good. But I've chosen crooked roads now every time. But when I heard the good man say, you know that there's another way. And he took us all away.
stop, we will never stop a walking freedom road. Oh, and all my dying day, you know that I was sure to say, I'm so happy that I walked that freedom road. Well, it's a long, long road, it's a long, long road, it's a long, long road on high. Well, if you want to save your soul, you gotta walk that freedom road, it's a long, long road on high. Oh. Oh. If I could quote, so uh, if I could quote the great you. Lionel Richie, yeah, he yeah, said I that, uh, he said that, like, the idea is the way life works is, like, life works doesn't work in a way of, like, you swing on a vine, you see the next vine, and you grab that vine and let go. The way life works is you swing on the vine, you see the next vine you want to grab, you have to let go of this one and jump for the other one, like, you make, like, a leap of faith, not knowing whether you're going to be able to grab it or not. No, you maybe even grab it, but you know, you to hang on or not. That's the way life works, and I'm doing that. That's where I'm at. I'm fucking. That was that was a fucking good analogy, dude. That you like that analogy? Who, who? Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie. He didn't tell it to me personally, but dude, that was actually like if you're high, that's like the best analogy ever, dude. Uh, thanks, Matt.